Hello. I'm back. Yes, I am wearing my school tie. <laughs> uh, today I'm reading The Cat Who Came In From The Cold by Derek Longdon. Chapter 8. I sat on the wall of the West Indian Club and tried to imagine what the world would look like if I were only six inches tall. Where would I go if I were six inches tall? Nick, who was six feet two inches tall, climbed the narrow steps from the park up to the dimly lit lane and shook his head. It's no good. We had searched for two hours now and unearthly a regular army of cats. Some no, and unearthed a regular army of cats. That would make more sense. <laughs> uh, some were off duty. Fast asleep in tumble down, tumble down outbuildings. And they had panicked at the sound of us. And then looked guilty at being caught catnapping. Others were wide awake and on guard. They spat at us, firing their rubber bullets indiscriminately. I was glad I wasn't six inches tall. I shan't find him tonight, not now. He was right. Sorry, no. We shan't find him tonight, not now. He was right. We walked back towards the house, sending the beam of our torches off into dark corners, pushing open gates with a nudge of the shoulder listening to the intermittent roar of traffic on the main road not 50 yards away. We had looked there first, in the gutter. You always look in the gutter. Cats seem to spin off when they have been hit by a car. They are very tidy animals. We found three white paper bags that could have been from a distant McDonald's poly... Polystyrene burger box. Wait. No. Let me start again. We could... We found three white paper bags that could have been him from a distance and a McDonald's polystyrene burger box that definitely was him from only a couple of feet away. He'll be back in the morning. You'll see. Aileen stood on the balcony and whistled. She had the sort of whistle that could make her, the hair on a pebble stand to attention. Cats from the outlying villages put their paws over their ears and composed letters of complaint to the evening paper. The locals called it in to complain in person. They scattered as Nick and I pushed open our final gate for the night. Aileen hadn't seen them arrive, and she didn't see them leave. For most of the time, she treated her blindness. She, she treated her blindness as though it were no more than a slight cold. But at times like this, she resented the fact that she had that she had to be left behind like a child to wait for the grown-ups. The very first thing next morning, I crept downstairs so as not to wake the others. I pushed open the door to the inner hall and padded down the corridor. I could almost see Thermal sitting on a step outside. He's not there. I've looked. Nick shouted from the kitchen. I had a look anyway, but I no, just to make sure. He's probably sleeping it off somewhere. He come from he comforted as he filled the kettle. He'll be back before long. We heard Aileen feel her way downstairs, open the inner door and pad along the narrow hallway. He's not there, I've looked, I shouted, but she had to go. The night before, draped in darkness, was the lane had assumed an air of menace, as though it were auditioning for a gothic novel. In the daylight, you could see that it wasn't up to the job. Don't ring us, we'll ring you. 
As a team, we searched the gardens and outbuildings. Each of the old stone houses sprouted at least a shed or a garage apiece, and some had a some had an outside lavatory thrown in for good measure. Nick and I peered in through through windows and guiltily tried to lock doors. Guiltily tried the locked doors, even. Uh, some didn't have locks, some didn't have doors. Aileen whistled and coughed in turn and lifted the lids from dustbins. But there were no but there was no sign of thermal and we trooped back to the house a beaten bunch. Earlier we had combed the park, like how like grouse beaters spread out in an ineffectual line. We found an old man sleeping it off in a flower bed, but he hadn't seen a kitten. Before that I had climbed over the wall into Patrick's. I was feeling very guilty about taking his cat away from him. If I had left well alone if I had left well alone then Thermal might still be here and better equipped to cope with life in the jungle. I had spoiled him rotten. There we go. (laughs) Nick had to leave that afternoon. It was Sunday and he was due down in Newport... Pagnell? Pagnell? Don't know how you pronounce that. For the start of a four-week course. You could have him... We could have him for three more weekends, but he flew back to Dubai. After we had seen him off, I sat down and put together an advert for the Lost and Found column in the Examiner. I offered a small small reward for Thermal's return, and if you are ever lonely and anxious to meet people, I suggest you do the same. The small boy held a bright ginger kitten in his arms. Either he had spent weeks training it to look pathetic, or it had just a natural gift for being miserable. Is this it? No, I'm sorry, mine was white. This one's got some white on him. Where? He turned the kitten over and examined its undercarriage. I saw some somewhere. It's not mine, I'm afraid. You don't have to buy it anyway. I can give you a choice. I've got three more at home. The girl was a little older and she needed to be if she was to hang out if she was to hang on to the cantankerous tabby. But I haven't heard that word in ages. <laughs> cantankerous I can't even say it now. Tabby she held in her arms. It was at the very least ten years old. Are you the one who's lost a kitten? Yes. Is this it? No. That's Ranji. He's Mr. Patel's cat. Where did you find him? In that garden on the corner. That's Mr. Patel's garden. I'd better put him back then. I think you had. The phone never stopped ringing and we made a trip up to Lindley to look at a likely prospect. I'm sorry, it's not ours. Thank God for that. I can keep it now without worrying. Other calls we could have done without. There's men going around stealing them now, you know. They make fur coats out of them and gloves and things. I wouldn't be at all surprised if he hadn't been taken. They have a van and they just chuck them in the back. My son says, my brain, I switched my brain off at that point. I didn't want to know what her son said. Aileen rang the RSPCA and the PDSA and all the local vets and drew a blank each time. He couldn't have just vanished off the face of the earth. And my biggest fear was that he was locked in a building somewhere very close. He could have heard us calling him. Our driver have found him dead in the gutter. 
than have him starve to death. I kept telling myself that it was only a cat, but nothing is only anything. And it was my cat, and as, and as such, unlike any other cat in the world. On the Wednesday morning, I wrote a circular... I wrote... I wrote a circular, don't even know what that means, but okay, and 